Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Starting with the name of Almighty Allah. Before digging into the topic that is gigantism. Let me ask you a very simple question. Yes, you are right. It's gonna be a simple one. Don't worry. Actually, have you ever heard about giants? Or have you seen someone taller than usual height? Someone whom you can call as a giant? I am damn sure you must have used words like freaks and giants for people in your life, isn't it? Am I right about it? Or have you ever heard about Robert Pershing Wardlow? I know it's a long name, but he was also called as Alton the Giant. Have you heard about him? Oh, not really. It's okay, I am here to tell you. He was actually the tallest man in history, with a height of 8'11". But the most important thing to know about him is that when he was only 6 months old, he already had a weight of 30 pounds. Yes, I am talking about a 6 months old child having a weight of 30 pounds, which is twice when it is compared with the weight of a normal baby boy. So yes, he was a very giant person from a very small age. Now you must be thinking that why these people in these pictures are looking so tall, why they look so abnormal, why they look like giants, freaks, isn't it? I know these words must be coming in your mind, but this is completely normal. This is a normal person's approach towards such people. But actually these people are suffering from a condition called gigantism. Now you must be wondering, what is gigantism? The word which we have been using from the very start. Actually, it's not a makeup product. It's not an online game. Rather, it is a disease. Yes, I am so sorry to disappoint you. It is a disease, which we are going to have a look on. So you seeing this beautiful, pretty lady over here sitting on a sofa and using her phone just like you people use. And this blue smiley popping out of her head. This is her pituitary gland. No, 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 no. In normal condition, pituitary gland lies inside your brain. This is just an illustration to explain. Now, this pituitary gland secretes a hormone called growth hormone. What does that growth hormone do? The function of the growth hormone is to increase your height, increase your growth, and to increase your weight. Now, you're seeing this pituitary gland right here. He is so tired because he has done a lot of work, of course. Now, you're seeing that blue smiley right there. He's so upset. He is so frustrated. He's so tired. And of course, he should be. Because in some cases, when there is a non-cancerous tumor of acidophil cells of pituitary gland in your body, it causes your pituitary gland to go completely crazy, completely mad. And when it happens, you know what happens next? Let me explain you. So once your pituitary gland goes mad, once your pituitary gland goes crazy, he's going to secrete a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of growth hormone. Far more than the requirement of your body. Now what will happen? You will look so tall because it will increase your height. It will increase your weight. So this is an illustration of a person suffering from gigantism. Of course, they're not that much tall as shown in this picture, but they're a lot, a lot, a lot more taller than the normal height. So therefore, sometimes they're referred as giants. I hope now we got a guess about gigantism, isn't it? Actually, gigantism is an abnormally large growth due to excess growth hormone production during your childhood before the growth plates fuse. Actually, this during your childhood is the most important point to notice because this is the difference between gigantism and acromegaly. Gigantism occurs when there is overproduction of your growth hormone during childhood and acromegaly occurs when there is overproduction of the growth hormone during adulthood. Okay. Talking about the causes of gigantism, the most common cause of the gigantism is overproduction of growth hormone due to non-cancerous tumor of acidophil cells of anterior pituitary gland, as we have explained before. Now, if we talk about clinical features of a person suffering from gigantism, so there is excessive growth. So a person may look large for his or her age, delayed puberty, there is double vision, difficulty in peripheral vision, thickening of the facial feature with your prominent jaw, and of course, headaches, increased sweating, irregular periods when it comes to females, large hands and feet with large fingers and toes. So actually, this picture is a comparison between hand and foot of a normal person and hand and foot of a um, person suffering from gigantism or you can say giant. So basically, they have larger hands, larger feet with long fingers. So this picture is an illustration that how small your hand will look when you will shake hands with a person suffering from gigantism. But during this time of corona, you're not allowed to shake hands.
So coming towards the pathophysiology of this disease, your hypothalamus causes the anterior pituitary lobe to secrete a growth hormone. Growth hormone has a growth promoting action, which causes your liver to secrete the insulin growth factor one. Insulin growth factor actually acts on your bones and cartilages, your body organs and your muscles, and it results in increased height, increased size of your body organs and increased muscle mass. But growth hormone also has an anti-insulin effect which will act on adipose tissues and carbohydrate metabolism. In case of carbohydrate metabolism, it will result in increased blood glucose. And in case of adipose tissue, it will result in decrease in adipose, adiposity. Okay. As you can see in this picture, this picture shows the organs of a normal person, a person who is not suffering from gigantism. So you can see that normal organs are so happy. Although these organs look happy too, but actually these organs have a great size than those shown before. Like this is because of gigantism. Because in gigantism, not only your height increases, you look tall, but also the size of your internal organ increases. And your muscle mass increases too. In case of diagnosis, you can go for MRI, CT scan, X-ray. And in case of the blood test, you go for prolactin blood test and insulin growth factor 1 blood test. And both the levels of the insulin growth factor 1 and prolactin would be high. When it comes to treatments of gigantism, you actually have three main ways, medication, radiation and surgery. Actually, the first and foremost possible solution is always medication. Medications that reduce growth hormone release are used because of course in gigantism you have overproduction of growth hormones so you need such medicines which actually decrease the production of growth hormones which are always smatostatin analogs or you can use dopamine against too but actually they are least effective so you are going to go for smatostatin analogs. The second method for treating gigantism is of course radiation therapy. Radiation therapy is used to bring the growth hormone level back to its normal. But actually this is a very time taking process. It requires 5 to 10 years for complete effect, for full effect. And often it is also going to affect other pituitary hormones too. So it is time taking, it is risky, like both at the same time. So you have to, you have to put these things in front of you while you are treating your patient and you have to take an complete concern of your patient before starting any kind of treatment. The third method to treat gigantism is through surgery, the removal of tumor on pituitary through endonasal surgery and this is the most effective of all of them. So when it comes to prognosis and prevention, pituitary surgery is usually the best option when it comes to limiting the growth hormone production. Now why is it? Because as I told you before, radiation is a very time-taking process and it is a very um, risky process and medications are not that helpful. So the last but not the least one left is surgery, of course. So it is the one you can say is somehow helpful. Okay. So gigantism cannot be prevented. But once it is removed through surgery, then it can be prevented from happening again by radiation therapy, by medications. Then your medications and radiation therapy would be a lot, a lot, a lot helpful. Last but not the least, we will discuss society's outlook about the people suffering from gigantism. Actually, people suffering from gigantism are called as freaks and giants. People have a negative behavior towards them. But there are many examples like Alton the Joint who prove that they can be a productive part of the society. Although when Alton the Joint was diagnosed with gigantism back in 1920, there was no treatment for treating gigantism. Still, he lived a normal lifestyle. He worked as a boy scout. He worked as a um, in a shoe company as an attraction. So basically, he proved that people suffering from gigantism can live a normal life too. And we should normally treat them like normal people. That is our responsibility as a person. Okay, so the moment you have waited for so long is here. This is a wrap to this video. We are done with gigantism. I hope I'm clear about gigantism. I hope you guys have learned something from this video. Thank you for bearing me for so long. Allah Hafiz.